Here is the summary of the story Weathering the Storm in Azama by Harsh Mandal. On 27th October 1999, Prashant was visiting his friend in Azama, a small town in coastal Orissa. In the evening, a dangerous storm blew into the town. Prashant had never seen such a storm in his life. Furious winds and continuous rains raged around the house. They could hear trees crashing to the ground and screams of people as the storm blew away their houses. The friend's house was made of bricks and mortar. It was strong enough to stand against the wind. But it could not prevent the family's terror as trees fell on the house cracking the roof and the walls. For 36 hours, the storm raged around the house. Water entered their house. The household took to the roof to escape the water flooding inside the house. 46 hours later, it was the first time Prashant saw the devastation left in the wake of the cyclone. Brown water covered everything. There were dead bodies of animals and people floating in the water. Trees were scattered among the bodies. Not a single house was left standing. The next two days, the family and Prashant lived on the roof. Prashant, throughout the time, worried about his family back home. He wondered if he would lose his family like he lost his mother. Three days later, on the third day, he decided to trek back to his family. The town was still flooded and his friend's family warned him that it would be dangerous. But Prashant was determined. It was a long and difficult journey for Prashant. He used a stick to find his path. As he walked further, he had a first-hand experience of the devastation that he had earlier seen on the roof. He was disturbed by the bodies he had to push aside as he made his way through the water. These sights also made him feel helpless. He was sure his family had met the same fate as the bodies in the water. When he reached his village, Kalikuda, Prashant was terrified to find his house destroyed. There was no one in sight. He decided to go to the nearby Red Cross shelter to search for them. As he entered the shelter, he saw his maternal grandmother. His grandmother rushed to him crying. She thought it was a miracle that he was alive. Prashant took count of his family. He felt grateful they were all alive. The next day, Prashant took stock of the situation in his village. Lives and homes had been lost. There was very little food left. His community was succumbing to grief and sadness. Though Prashant was only 19, he took charge of the village. He organized a youth group to get rice from the local merchant and distribute it to the survivors. Next. He organized volunteers to clean the shelters and tend to injuries. Five days later, on the fifth day, a helicopter dropped a few food parcels. When it didn't return, the youth volunteers collected empty utensils. They had young boys lie on the ground with empty utensils on their bellies. This message got through to the helicopters and relief came frequently thereafter. There were also many children orphaned by the cyclone. Prashant brought them together under one shelter. Women were brought in to look after them while men procured food for them. Prashant also realized that the women and children left grieving after losing their families needed to be engaged. He convinced women to join the Food for Work NGO program. He organized cricket matches to distract the children. Prashant and the youth task force rejected the government plan for removing the women and children to institutions. He believed in resettling them in their community to enable a smoother healing process. Prashant, suffering from his experience of the cyclone, found new purpose and comfort in rebuilding his own community. Whenever a woman or a child felt sad, they would seek the support of Prashant. His efforts show how a crisis can bring about heroism even in ordinary people. 
Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to our channel.